Hey everyone, I'm Alex, and today on Big Al Books, I'm going to be doing a TBR for the month of June. I do not usually do monthly TBRs, but I've been inspired seeing everyone putting out these videos for what they're going to be reading in the month of June, where there is a Reading Women Readathon. I believe this was started by Kendra Winchester, and if you check out her channel and her website, she's listed this whole series of prompts that are meant to inspire people to pick up female authors throughout the whole year, but I think there's a specific focus focus to be crossing off a lot of these prompts during the month of June. So I'm not going to be directly participating in the challenges, but I do plan on reading mostly female authors this month. And since June is National Aboriginal Month in Canada, I'm going to be trying to read entirely female Indigenous authors this month. So I'm hoping to return to some of my old favorite authors, and I'm hoping to try out a lot of new authors, and hopefully I'll find a few more favorites. So I have a TBR of 15 books, which is way too ambitious, especially with the month being June. When I am teaching, June is a terrible month as it is when you get all the last minute marking, exams, finishing report cards. I probably won't have a lot of time, but even if I don't finish all 15 books this month, I do plan on checking them out at some point, and I think that they're all really cool and worth talking about. So I'm going to talk about them all anyway. So let's just dive right into my June TBR. First up, I have Bad Endings by Carly Baker. This was recently nominated for the Indigenous Voices Prize in Fiction, so that's what brought this under my radar. Carly Baker is a Cree, Métis, and Icelandic author uh, from British Columbia, and these short stories, I've read the first few, and they're very strange and dark and funny, so I'm really looking forward to this collection. On the back cover, here are some words that jumped out at me. Awkward, unexpected, plain strange, bad decisions, misconceptions. These are all buzzwords for me, so I'm really looking forward to finishing up this collection. The other short story collection that I have that was nominated for the Indigenous Voices Award as well um, is Glass Beads by Dawn Dumont. Dawn Dumont is a Plains Cree woman from Saskatchewan, and this collection has a kind of unfortunate cover, but they seem to be an interconnected group of short stories, which I usually do enjoy. I think it's about modern day life on the reservation, and there should be four main characters, I think, so we'll see them at different points in their lives. So looking forward to reading this one. I also decided to check out one of Don Dumont's novels as well. This is one called Rose's Run. It looks like it's just kind of a fun, good time romp. It's about a woman who has been left by her husband and she starts organizing a marathon but also has to do battle with an ancient demon. So I really don't know what to expect for this one but it does look pretty fun. Another novel I'd like to get to is Slash by Jeanette Armstrong. She's from the Penticton Reservation in the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia and I think that this book is about an activist from the 60s and 70s so there should be a lot of kind of badass decolonization rebellion going on in this book and you know it looks quite mysterious based on the cover so even though this one isn't quite as contemporary as some of the other books on this list I think that I'll learn some cool things about history and I think that this one should be a lot of fun. Another author I've been meaning to read for a long time is Louise Erdrich. She is an Ojibwe author from the American side of the border. I have owned a copy of her book Love Medicine for a long time and I recently got this cute little copy of her book The Roundhouse. I'd like to tell you what this book is about, but unfortunately the back cover does not have a lot of information. All I know is that there is going to contain sorrow in this book, so it could really be about anything. I just hope that it's going to be good. I'd like to read some more Leslie Marmon Silco. This is probably her most famous book, Ceremony, and it's about a soldier returning home from World War II back to his Laguna Pueblo reservation, which is also where Leslie Marmon Silco grew up. I read her other novel, Almanac of the Dead, last year, and it was really one of the most intense books that I've ever read. So this one is like a fraction of the size, so I'm looking forward to reading more by this author in a bit more of an accessible format. Another author I would love to return to this month is Lee Miracle. She's from the Stolo First Nation, and her novel Raven Song that I read last year totally blew me away. This is another one of her novels called Celia's Song. One of the characters in Raven Song was named Celia, and she was really mystical and kind of clairvoyant, but the text didn't really deal much with her, so I'm hoping that this is going to be the same character and we're going to get more insight on what's going on with this girl, so I would love to read this book. 
Moving on into some poetry collections, I'd like to read A Really Good Brown Girl by Marilyn Dumont. This one's kind of a classic. Uh, Marilyn Dumont is a Métis author, and I think this poetry collection is kind of just reflecting on her experience uh, growing up Métis. Also, it has an introduction by Lee Miracle, so you know it's going to be great. Moving on to some more contemporary poetry collections, I would love to read Whereas by Lely Long Soldier. She's an Oglala Lakota poet, and this collection is seem to receive a lot of praise and awards last year so I'm hoping that it will be excellent. It is also just like a beautifully bound collection of poetry. Another collection I'd like to read is Infinite Citizen of the Shaking Tent by Liz Howard. She identifies as a Euro Anishinaabek way from Treaty 9 territory in northern Ontario. It sounds like she comes from an academic background where she studied science but then she also got into creative writing and poetry. So these poems I can already tell from the first few that I flipped through are going to be pretty intense and avant-garde. I'm not sure if I'm going to get them, but I think that they're going to be pretty interesting along the way. I've been meaning to get to Islands of Decolonial Love, Stories and Songs by Leanne Simpson. She's an Anishinaabeg author, and I really loved her collection, This Accident of Being Lost. Um, this one looks like a bit more of the same. She's very unconventional with her writing. She's not really bound to genre or tradition. She kind of just does whatever she wants and produces some pretty amazing results. Also, this has a Lee Miracle blurb on the back. So you see Lee Miracle's name and I'm just there. <laughs> Moving into the nonfiction section, I actually also have a nonfiction book by Leanne Betasamasake Simpson. This is called As We Have Always Done, Indigenous Freedom Through Radical Resistance. So yeah, this is going to be a pretty badass read about how indigenous people are coming together and <laughs> resisting colonization. So I am super excited to read her scholarship and I think that this will be a really insightful read. I swear this is the last time that I'm going to mention Lee Miracle in this video, um, but I would love to read this text by Lee Miracle. It's called I Am Woman, A Native Perspective on Sociology and Feminism. So I feel like this just really fits the theme of the reading women that I'm planning on doing in June, and I just love reading Lee Miracle's nonfiction. I think she explains complicated ideas in a really easy to understand way, so I would love to hear her thoughts on feminism. I'd also like to get to Life among the Colonat by Minnie Ayodla Freeman. She's an Inuk author who grew up in the James Bay region and this is also about her life moving south of the Arctic Circle which I imagine is quite disorienting. I talk a lot about wanting to read First Nations, Métis, and Inuit authors, but I feel like I haven't done a lot of reading from that Inuit perspective, so I'm hoping that this will be a really enlightening read, and I think it should be interesting. It's published by this First Voices, First Text series, um, and their mission statement is that they publish lost or underappreciated texts by Indigenous writers. So I think that that's a great series to support, and I'm really looking forward to reading this one. The last book on my list is pretty nerdy. Nerdy, but I'm very excited about it. This one's called Decolonizing Education and it's by Marie Baptiste who is a Mi'kmaq scholar. So what I'm noticing a lot in uh, Canadian schools people are talking a lot about how to better integrate First Nations, Métis, and Inuit perspectives in the classroom. And I feel like a lot of teachers kind of pay lip service to this idea, but then don't really know how to go about actually achieving that. So this is a topic that I'm always fascinated in learning more about and how I can present these perspectives more authentically in my classes. So I'm just really excited to reading this book over the summer and I hope that it gives me some fresh new ideas. I think Marie Baptiste is an incredible scholar, so it will be quite fascinating to read her work on this topic. So that's it for my Reading Indigenous Women Inspired June TBR. I know that I probably can't get to all of these books, but I'm still very excited about this project, and I hope that we can reconnect in my June wrap-up where I can talk about these books in a lot more detail once I have read them. So please let me know if you have any more suggestions for me, because I already have a ridiculous TBR. What's the harm in piling on some more books, right? And let me know if you're participating in the Reading Women Challenge in general. I'd um, love to talk about books a little bit further with you, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.